주변에서 핸드폰으로 볼수 있어. 자, 어디 시작했는데? 잠깐 시작했어. 마이크 마이크 저기다 놓고 그래. 안 잡힐 것 같은데. 아, 마이크 당연히. 안녕하세요. 가치의 가치를 전하는 블록체인에서의 영혼과 네. 초보자를 위한 초보자를 위한 사용자들 위한 블록체인 태음기 <웃음> 미스터 블록체인의 현창 성지입니다. 네. 네 오늘은 저희가 그 중국에서 또 귀한 손님분을 모셨어요. 아주 귀한 분입니다. 네 그래서 중국에 이제 퀀텀 위에서 돌아가는 에너지 관련한 분산 어플리케이션인 에노고 프로젝트의 지금 CEO를 맡고 계신 카이카이님을 모셨습니다. 카이카이, please introduce yourself to okay. Karen and Ian first. Um, 안녕하세요. Uh, 저는 카이카이입니다. Uh, hello everyone. I'm Kaikai from Enable Labs. So it's great to uh, reunion with my Korean friends here again in Seoul. Even it's cold, but I think yeah, the room is very warm and also the the whole blockchain industry is very hot. So yeah, uh, let's begin our interview today. Right. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about the energy industry in general, particularly the Chinese renewables market. And how Energo will transform the kind of energy industry and kind of decentralize it. So mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun discussing energy plus blockchain. Yeah. yeah I think and, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, you guys wanna intervene or interview, then please leave a comments there. Right. So I think it's very interesting concept that you're trying to uh, work together between the blockchain and the energy industry. Mm -hmm. So can you explain like the general introduction to Energo? Okay. And also, you call it DAE system, right? Yes. So um, actually, uh, Energo Labs, we implement the blockchain with the renewable energy. We want to reshape a new energy future. It's called decentralized autonomous energy community. Within this community, we want to make it possible for all the energy users. They can exchange their excess clean energy freely from peer-to-peer or even machine to machine mm -hmm. and also in the future we, we we want to make it possible for the even for the vehicle to the grid so that's basically and roughly what we're doing and uh, actually uh, right now we have uh, we have the first project mm -hmm. in somewhere and also we okay. need want to have more support from to build our ecosystem okay uh, before that can you briefly explain about yourself your background what you have done and why you got interested in <laughs> energy market oh. and blockchain. Okay, so, so. Um, actually I don't have any technique background uh, for the blockchain coding and also I'm not from energy sector. Uh, I my previous job was in Tencent, so we start, it's, a, uh, it's an incubator from Tencent. So I'm in charge of the early stage of startup incubating and investment. Um, but uh, actually, I invested Bitcoin during my college. I think it's from 2010 to wow. 2000. Wow. <laughs> yes. Let me ask that. 2010? How, how much you invested? Uh, at that time, I think uh, overall it's like so $1,000 at that time. $1,000 in 2010? And, uh, but Guys, please calculate how much it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, I was a student at the time, so I, uh, I only have several Bitcoin, but I do invest in a lot of uh, another coin that was so yeah. cheap that time, so I have like so many in that coin. But right now, I found, well, the price of this coin is surging, mm -hmm. it's flying, but I cannot find my wallet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you see, yeah, things happen, and uh, so. But at that time, I found the blockchain is really interesting, right. mm -hmm. and uh, I w I was a very kind of professional jazz drummer for for mm -hmm. seventeen years. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of utopia people. Mm -hmm. So when I first uh, during blockchain and Bitcoin, I think that was uh, such a utopia thing. Mm -hmm. So and then even I cannot figure out the technology behind. I mean, Bitcoin, uh, even the blockchain at that time, but I was quite interested about this technology. So last year when I met my partner, Ray, and then we had several discussions for the blockchain technology with renewable energy because we were both super fans for Elon Musk. 
So oh, yeah. I think the best so way. To, yeah. So, so I think <laughs> the best way to support my super <laughs> superhero Elon Musk is definitely I should do something to support. Oh. Yeah. So at that time I quit very quickly and uh, we we got our seed investment in a short time, and then yeah, everything happens after mm. after. Okay. What about the energy market? What kind of problems do you want to solve with Energo? Okay. So I think uh, the first problem is like uh, we want to make a blockchain a way to help all the energy users from passive energy users to active energy users. There's a thing I talk with so many people when I was in Singapore I, when I took the cab I asked the cab driver how do you think your electricity bill is expensive? He said yeah hell yes <laughs> um, but I asked him how much you pay for the bill he said mm -hmm. I don't know you see there are a lot of people they think um, I pay a lot for the electricity bill but they don't know how much they pay for the electricity and even for the distribution fee the service fee mm -hmm. so most of the time we are the passive users we only pay when we got the bill mm -hmm. but we don't know how much we pay and what <coughs> happened for the, all the electricity so we want to make a blockchain as a way to to change and enable these the traditional passive energy users to become the active users from our application they can check how much clean energy they have generated how much they have consumed and how much they had the transaction with the with their neighbors it's all transparent and also the second i think that's the biggest problem there are lots of areas or um, i mean specific um, Western part in China, there are lots of companies. They 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 got lots of the rooftop areas mm. because they're so empty, and they install install the centralized uh, solar panels, mm. and then they got the feeding tariff, I mean the the government sub subsidy, and then all the energy get wasted because mm. if you want to distribute the energy from this area to Shanghai to Beijing to Guangzhou, it's it costs so expensive for the distribution and the infrastructure. So how we can like make the full usage, I mean, we can make the full usage of this renewable energy. It's not only, it's a way we, we can get some money from the government. So by blockchain, we want the DAE community, which we want to reshape as in this community, people, they can consume the renewable energy first. And when the renewable energy is used up, also the smart meter will switch to the state grid. And then the traditional grid will be a backup energy for the users. Yes, uh, I think uh, reading out your uh, white papers at the Energo Labs, it seems like smart meter and smart grid is very important to actually execute your DAE community, right? Yeah. So uh, I think uh, looking at the uh, challenges or some kind of a hurdles that you guys have to actually overcome, it seems like there are two issues. Uh, who's actually going to pay for all of that amount of cost for the infrastructure? Yeah. And the second thing is about the security issues. But first of all, I would like to ask you, do you guys have some kind of uh, businesses uh, partnering with you guys to actually install the infrastructure? Or are you guys actually planning on producing or selling those infrastructure such as smart meters or smart grid. Okay, uh, first I have to mention that uh, right now the strategy for our company and the project that we source the existing microgrid project. In that way, we don't need to like invest uh, money at first because um, actually there are lots of microgrid and there are more and more increasing amount of the microgrids get installed and financed in Southeast Asia and even in India because mm -hmm. there are lots of areas they don't have a very strong infrastructure to uh, to distribute the centralized uh, grid to remote areas so uh, by this way we don't need to spend a lot of money for the infrastructure right now and also uh, for in our business model we have two business role one is uh, Enigo Labs we provide every software and hardware integrated by our blockchain service and also we have uh, another business role who operates and who invested the infrastructure especially for the grid uh, the microgrid and the energy storage so and so that's why in our business model every ksl we get received from the uh, from the users like 80 percent will goes to their pocket and the 10 to 15 percent will goes to our pocket 
So at first we don't. Yeah, sorry guys, the volume is too low, so we gotta, okay. we gotta sort of volume it up first. Is it that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's gonna be better if we can speak more. Yeah, speak okay. Louder. louder. Okay. And okay. We're, we're, sorry guys, we're gonna just like um, set the settings right first. We're gonna edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Now we see the face of Korean Steven Spielberg on our Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, sorry. Sorry guys. Sorry. So where where do we <coughs> pause just now? Mm, that's like, uh, <laughs> the first question. Who invested yeah, in yeah, infrastructure? Yeah. So so right now we don't invest it and so you guys are focusing on uh, already made and already st installed yeah, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because for a startup, uh, if you want to invest and operate and run mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure like microgrid, it definitely costs a lot. That's yes, right. yes. Then uh, it seems like uh, you guys are not only focusing on the uh, developing nations right now, right? You guys are uh, also working in India and Singapore and Thailand, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Then. Uh, is there any kind of a company that who wants to actually install the infrastructure and get a help from you guys for the platforms and the software? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are in the discussion with several um, partners in Thailand, in uh, India, and in Singapore. All and there are different aspects how we can partner. First, definitely as a project partners, mm -hmm. and second, we want to find more. Uh, we are talking for some uh, partner possibility for the research project because we want to find out that how blockchain can really implement it and have some disruptive mm -hmm. for, for the energy sector. And definitely we need to um, get the support from all people from the energy sector to have some research. And third is that we want to um, incubate and invest several uh, potential and good uh, early stage clean tech startups. Because from my experience, I do think that uh, for a clean tech startup, it's very tough at the beginning. Because uh, compared to a fintech and e-commerce startup, we we definitely to need to be very patient. It's a long way to get the return. So that's why it's very difficult to find the investment. And also for a startup, a clean tech startup is very difficult to find the big corporate partners. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, yeah. You, you mentioned about um, the um, Thailand and other co countries. Mm -hmm. um, so have you done any of the pilot cases there, or okay. are you targeting the Chinese market as well? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. The first question. Yes, we just finished the phase one for the first pilot in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and we partner with a local energy company and the local university there. And now we are going to scale up with 200 users. In that case, I think that will be the biggest project based on the blockchain in the world. With 200 users? Yeah, 200 where, where is users. that at? 200 it's users. in the Philippines. That's wow. an island project. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, so uh, that's the first question, right? And second question. So how, how, was, the, how was the project then? Okay. How was the pilot cases? Like, have you have you learned any lessons there? Yeah. So is this, was it successful? Mm -hmm. Right. I think uh, what I have learned from the first project is um, sometimes it's very difficult to see like why we use blockchain right. because there is some energy company they try to find us saying, hey, let's do something together. Yeah, blockchain is so cool. But when you talk with them, you will find that even for this company, they haven't figured out what they want to do for the blockchain. And in that case, you have to think about whether it's possible or whether we have to use the blockchain in these scenarios. So I don't want to follow the hype and just use blockchain in any cases. In that way, I don't think that's the real value for the blockchain. And so I think that's the first thing I learned. You have to choose. You have to choose something and have some sacrifice for some projects. And also I think uh, for the for the Chinese market, um, yes, I think the Chinese market is the sacrifice for our company. We don't target Chinese com Chinese market now because there are some regulation and monopoly from the marketplace. And also, I think uh, there is right now there is 
there is no appropriate uh, economic benefits for the users to use our solution because in China, like if you want to, if you just use the state's grid electricity, it's only cost like one, like ten cents dollars. It's not very expensive, and also if you want to have the feed-in tariff from the solar energy, it's yeah. I think the money is good, so that's why we don't. Do some, I mean, the, even any markets right now in uh, Chinese markets. Yes. Okay, we have a lot of questions about the regulations of Chinese market right now, but we will leave it that to the end of the interview. Okay. Okay. And uh, following up the second question that mm -hmm. I was about to ask about the smart meters and the smart grid, I think it's very awesome mm -hmm. to actually uh, implement those kind of new technology to our society mm -hmm. so that we can benefit from consumers and consumers, right? Yes. But the thing is, uh, they were actually talking about the privacy issue as well. Yes. Since if I can actually control my home systems mm -hmm. yes. and if I can check when I'm sleeping and when I'm not sleeping mm -hmm. throughout my usage of the electricity, mm -hmm. then if that information actually gets hacked and if other like uh, hackers actually get into those information, then it's a problem. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any thoughts or you guys have any uh, solutions for that uh, issues there? Yes, um, I think yes. We have to admit the, for the security uh, issue and the privacy issue, and also I mean to use by using blockchain. There are lots every day. There are lots of I mean um, problems you will, you will face with. So. Um, Right now, we do uh, have some developing uh, progress to protect the privacy and the security issue in our application. And also, the second thing we are doing is like uh, we partner some uh, energy research institution and also some blockchain uh, projects like Quantum. Uh, they are the best partner for us to find out what's the best solution to. I mean, for some improvements to to the security issue and the privacy <coughs> issue, because it comes that uh, I think uh, blockchain technology is still seems like a baby now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, we yes. still need find more people, and it's a definitely it's a long way to to go in the future for so many problems. Mm -hmm. I know for the technology itself. <coughs> yes. So you said um, blockchain technology is a baby right now, mm -hmm. but I think uh, the smart grid and the microgrid concept is also a baby yes, concept. Yes. So do you think we have enough like community systems mm -hmm. to apply this software to the world or like how, how, where do we have to go okay. to apply this? Yes, I, I do think it's a very big market. Yeah. For example, in South Africa and the Indian market, there are over 1.3 billion people that even, they don't have the the access to the grid, mm -hmm. so it's a very big mar market for us to implement our solution mm -hmm. because in these areas, people and the government they don't need to invest like tons of money dollars to invest a centralized grid. And uh, to be honest, uh, they are still in the I mean in a very early stage uh, development phase for the uh, grid infrastructure. But I do think maybe they don't need to go to the centralized grid. Maybe mm -hmm. they will just path through to the decentralized okay. grid infrastructure and energy structure in the future. So, uh, so there actually there are lots of uh, projects right now. They are mm -hmm. doing the blockchain with the energy sector. Okay. I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I think uh, trying to figure out what's the best market for yourself is a very mm -hmm. big topic now. Okay. Otherwise, like I mean, energy is very sensitive and yes. uh, highly regulation. Even you can have the some. Even you finish all the development and you have some POC, but to implement it, the POC to the commercialization, it's a very tough and a very long way to go. So this is kind of a technical question. You have to deal with many different markets, with many different like, uh, systems, communities. Yes. So I want to ask you about the interoperability. Mm -hmm. Like, can your software work with any machines, any community? Because I believe in even smart grid, we have different smart grids yes, around the world. Yes, yeah. um, to be honest, no. But yes. so for every so different countries, different projects in different countries, we tailor made the application for them. Okay. But I think we uh, we don't need to have a big change because mm -hmm. 
we even have some rough, uh, I mean, the architecture for the whole application. Okay. But definitely, we need to do some uh, pre-marketing research for different mm -hmm. markets we want to enter, okay. and then we tailor made the, the best uh, application and the business model for the local market. So, can we say this, like? Once we have like a smart meter, mm -hmm. can it apply to any suppliers? Mm -hmm. Any supplier? No. Like general, no. In general? Uh, uh, it depends on whether you are in the micro grid. Mm -hmm. Because okay. otherwise, yeah. So there, are, that's the biggest concern when I talk with some people at the first time. Because mm -hmm. they think, mm -hmm, from the digital side, yeah, mm -hmm. in the digital world, yes, you can have the transaction. But how you can do it, how you can achieve it in the physical world. Yes. So that's the challenge for our project. How to connect the physical world to the digital world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of the more technical questions is that when you're entering the, um, it's called the um, garbage in, garbage out problem. When you're entering the data into the blockchain, mm -hmm. so uh, for example, if you uh, want to get green credit, yeah. so if you want to prove that you produce like certain amount of electricity mm -hmm. by using a renewable mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. so but there's no objective way of telling that you are not lying. Yes. So I produce like this amount of energy, mm -hmm. but when when you actually produce like this amount of energy, mm -hmm. so how do you kind of like prevent people from sort of lying about lying each other, okay. lying to each other? I think that's why we use blockchain in this mm -hmm. scenario because uh, if we don't use blockchain people can cheat on and if they claim they have generated like 100 kilowatts to clean energy but how we can testify they have generated this amount of because because the from traditional energy and the renewable energy once it gets mix, mixed from the grid you cannot tell how much you have generated for the renewable energy so it really happens the garbage in and the garbage out for the green the renewable energy credit uh, case so I think uh, in most of the uh, com countries and the uh, REC system, mm -hmm. by using blockchain, it's a very good uh, scenario and uh, business case to use. And also, I think uh, only by using this way, there is some, uh, we can develop uh, this b business because right now, even in some countries, the governments, they re released the policy for the REC uh, system, but there are seldom companies, they follow the policy because they think, yeah, you cannot track mm -hmm. how we can do this, right? Yes, so I think that's the value for blockchain to, <coughs> to use in this case. Right. Yeah, yeah we, ju we just got some questions from our viewers right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they're saying that you, you guys I don't actually think that he actually has understood this, but <laughs> no. yeah, he's actually t saying that you guys are focusing on Chinese market. Are you guys trying to do a listing on Chinese exchange? Mm -hmm. And is there any details about the pro progression over that? Okay, you mean Chinese exchange? But I have to be very honest uh, because from last September, all the ICO projects and uh, exchange get banned in China, so it's definitely impossible we get uh, listed in the Chinese exchange, but we uh, we are in a discussion with some international exchange, so we will get listed soon. And uh, second question? What, what and and uh, uh, for that, I, ha I have my personal okay. question over that. Uh, it seems like you guys have done the ICO this summer, right? Yeah. And after the announcement of the Chinese government banning the ICO, you guys have refunded all, is it all your uh, ICO budgets or how much was it and how did it go? Okay, I think uh, it's like one third of the tokens gets refunded. And because there, most of our ICO uh, we fundraising uh, is from an international uh, platform. And, but we do have the policy to, for the refunding. So as long as there are one third of the tokens get refunded. To and Chinese buyers or to the international buyers as well? To all the buyers, oh, okay. yes. And for the, for the refunding tokens, we half of the tokens, we uh, distribute, distribute to all the TSL tokens right now. So it's, you guys have airdrop yeah, yeah, yeah. TSL to the... To our whole community, oh, uh, okay. yes. And half of the token, we reserve it for our uh, business development for different projects uh, in, in, in the world. So, yeah. And one more question from the 
uh, viewer. Mm -hmm. He's saying that uh, he actually received some information saying that you guys are trying to do some kind of a cooperation and coordination with Korean firm. Mm -hmm. And do you guys have any plans to do some announcements or are you guys actually working with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I think the main reason I visited uh, Korea a lot because Yes, we do meet lots of uh, energy companies, and not only for cryptocurrency, we're also some energy re relevant companies. But we still need to figure out what's the, you know, who's the best partner for us to, to develop uh, the DAE concept. Because yes, right now we can do some projects, but by using blockchain with an irrelevant irrele project, I don't think that's the best value to implement blockchain. So yeah, we definitely we will, uh, uh, I think, release the news of the partnership in Korea soon. But uh, mm. we is that gonna be more than one company? Uh, I think, I think one is enough right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's wait because I think uh, yes, partnership is is quite difficult for us yeah. in, in energy sector because. Yeah. There is some, I mean, uh, special connection with different companies, so it's very hard to choose the best. So that's why we want to be more conscious for, for this. So the uh, listing on exchanges are coming up, not in the Chinese uh, yeah, exchange, yeah, yeah. but on the international exchange. Yes. And you guys are working with Korean company for sure. Um, that's for sure, but <laughs> we need to, we have to finalize uh, okay. how to partner. Uh, how to, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I just want to ask a follow-up question mm -hmm. on that. Like, so you, you, you said you, you did a meetup in Japan. Yes. So just, how do you, um, what are you, what's your goal in Korean and Japanese market? Uh, I think... Uh, how, how is your interaction with like Japanese okay. firms as well? Um, first is for the community, definitely. Because I think uh, at the meetup, people, I think uh, in the meeting with some um, Japanese companies, a couple of weeks ago, I think I had I have my experience that I think blockchain is not a platform. We don't want to make Enigle as a platform. Mm -hmm. We want to make it as a community because in one platform you use something and then you left. But in, within this community, we want to make you stay in this community. So the first thing in Japan or in Korea, we want to build our real community in this community people support us even like every question they ask and every opinion or suggestion they have raised we do very appreciate for their suggestion because that's why we can grow up and that's why we i mean it's not only for the token price definitely is for the long term our company's development and uh, scaling up and the second thing is um, yes we do have some uh, conversation and discussion with local energy company in japan and korea mm -hmm. yes right. um so moving on to the competitors mm -hmm. like who are your main competitors and what kind of competitive competitive edge do you have over your competitors okay i think uh there are over like uh, there are about five to seven competitors about the blockchain and energy sector but uh, for myself i think right now we don't have our competitor because Compared to other projects, I think we are the only one project focusing microgrid solution with uh, um, renewable energy and the blockchain. Uh, I think, uh, and for the edge, for our for Enigo Labs, I think the biggest edge I think is our team, mm -hmm. um, because uh, as <coughs> I've witnessed lots of ICO projects and blockchain star startups. Yeah, they can fundraising like millions of money or even more, but uh, it's very hard to operate your team. And especially for our company, like uh, blockchain is a baby and renewable energy mm -hmm. is a baby. How you can attract these talents to mm -hmm. join your team, it's very difficult. It's a very big topic. And, uh, but uh, from the beginning, we only have two people. Right now we have 25 people. It's a very big milestone for our team, and uh, by these 25 people, we can achieve the first uh, POC project, and uh, we have grown up our community with like 12,000 people, and uh, we have uh, 25 people from 10 different countries in Shanghai, our headquarters, 
and also the average age for our team is 27 years old. Mm. So that's what we have achieved. Uh, so I think the edge is our team. Yeah, I mean, uh, throughout the Korean uh, cryptocurrency community, a lot of people were uh, talking about your age. It seems like you're like 15 or younger than that. <laughs> yes, that's uh, the biggest concern for me because when I meet the, when I have had the official meeting with some energy company, it's very, I mean, it's very, it's a very big trouble for me. Oh. They think, uh, how old are you? <laughs> like I'm saying, uh, I'm 26. Yeah, this year I'm 27 in 2018. But they said, mm, I have been in the energy sector for over 30 years. <laughs> you are like, you're still in the baby in this uh, industry. So uh, yeah, I should dress more formal in the future. But uh, I think, yeah, it's my style hoodie and the t-shirt. <laughs> I, I do, yes, I think, uh, but so uh, when People have uh, more conversation, and uh, if they can get access to to your YouTube channel, they will understand more about myself and my team. Mm -hmm. And even I look like young, but it's okay. It's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, a it's, good it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. How, you, how think, you think is more important than how you look, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that there's a dilemma here because in the blockchain industry, the younger the better. Yes. But in the energy industry, you're the older you the better. Right? Yes. So it's yeah. kind of like, you, you need to find the right balance between the two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, um, so, I think yeah, yeah. You, made, you, should, you mentioned very interesting part. I mean, we've discussed this before, mm -hmm. but like I think this one, Energy Plus Blockchain, it has a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's a lot of issues that you need to take care of. Yes, and because the energy industry, pure to pure energy, like market, is a baby, right? Mm -hmm. As you said, like blockchain is a baby, so you need to take care of that. Not just one baby, but two babies at the same time. Yes. So. What are your kind of like timeline be like, and do you have any specific milestones that you want to like have in mind? Yes, uh, we do. Uh, we have our plan in this year. The plan we have uh, in this year is so we will soon uh, set up. We are setting up our regional hub in uh, Singapore and Netherlands. I think these are the one of the most. Uh, I mean, developing countries who support uh, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and clean tech. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Singapore is facing the best place to have the impact for all the Southeast Asian countries. And Netherlands, they have a very big, uh, I mean, competitors that most of uh, foreign uh, companies, big companies, when they release the new product, they will choose Netherlands to be the first marketplace. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are setting up our original hubs in these countries and also for projects we, um, aside for the 200 projects, we will have uh, the total amount for the users. We hope that we can get like 500 users for our project. That means 400 users, they will be the real community people in, in our projects. It's very important because I think we have to need more projects and more data to see how we can improve for the sustainability, the scalability, the okay. security issue. Yeah, we do need more projects to testify. And for the final, I think that um, is, mm, I hope that we can use the less cost to survive. Because ITO is very hard now, okay. but uh, I do hope that make it our company as a very lean startup. Okay. Yeah, because uh, just forget about blockchain and ICO. Like 99% of the startups, they will fail. Mm -hmm. So let's see whether Enable Labs can make it successful. Even yeah. there is no ICO and there is no hype for the whole blockchain. Yeah. We want to make a lean startup to survive and have the real valuable product for our users. That's the, that's the thing I always talk with my team. Okay. So I think you, you mentioned that your teams are great. But like, can you give us more information about your team? Because like, you know that your team is great, but we don't have any evidence that your team okay. is great, right? So, yes. what are the specific qualifications your team members have? Okay, uh, I think the the first the requirements for me to hire people is I don't care about your existing experience. I only care about whether you can have a very great learning ability for the new things mm -hmm. and also your vision to the renewable energy and uh, blockchain. Because I always, um, I always, I always had said something like, the, "Don't judge from your existing experience," because 
we have two babies right now, right? Mm -hmm. We cannot treat them at a very, like 30 years adult and say, hey, we can only do this because I do this, I did this before. And so I think the main reason, I think the, our team is very good because um, uh, it's a very, I mean, awkward, I mean, very embarrassed because <laughs> the first is a disadvantage because we don't have existing experience in these two topics and in the industries. So when the beginning we had meeting and when we try to talk with related people, they don't trust us because they think yeah, you don't have uh, experience before. Why I have to like uh, partner with you for such a new thing. But uh, right now I figure out that maybe that's the advantage. And in that case, we can have the we can develop a product that we really have the value for the blockchain and the renewable energy. Renewable energy. We want to make the distributed renewable energy with the distributed blockchain world. That's that's our vision for the for this product. We don't want to follow the trend like peer to peer. So that's why we we focus more for the energy storage sharing, because. Uh, Peer-to-peer -peer is good, it's cool, but you have to lower the cost for the users, otherwise why they want to use your application, right? So, yeah, so I think um, the main reason the team is good because just because we don't have the relevant experience before, so that's why we can have a really relevant uh, revolution and uh, disruptive product for this scenario and the new business. Okay, so um, talking about Energo, yes. so, um, your token is called Tesla, right? Tesla. And you're a big fan of Elon Musk. <laughs> and there's a company called Tesla Motors, right? <laughs> is there any relationship? No, the Tesla... I wanted to ask this. Yeah, okay. Actually, the main reason for yeah. Tesla because yeah. to to remember the people yeah. who bring the electricity mm -hmm. to the world, mm -hmm. Tesla and Nikola. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I think that's the only reason. But... Okay. To be honest, I, I, I even talk with Space Chain. Okay. They call the yeah. founder of uh, Z from mm -hmm. Space Chain. If mm -hmm. I, yeah, if I, if he need help, definitely mm -hmm. I want to help his uh, project. Okay. It's a very Space Chain is a more mm -hmm. long term project. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if I can do the renewable energy good, and if I can do the Space Chain good, mm -hmm. yes, I think I can. I I think I'm closer to my. To Elon Musk. So is it like a proposal to Elon Musk right now? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I will send him the link on Twitter, but I'm not sure if he, he will check. I think he's watching us right now. Okay, yeah. Hi, okay. Elon. The reason I mentioned the Tesla Motors is yeah. because in order to achieve bigger market, it's very important that you coordinate with the uh, bigger industries. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Elon Musk with uh, Tesla and SolarCity, mm -hmm. right now they're developing their own system softwares in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to your white paper, I think. So mm -hmm. do you think you can coordinate with companies like them? Mm -hmm. Or do you think they have their own software already? Mm -hmm. And why do, they, why do people have to use Energo instead of like, those systems? Okay, I, I think it depends. Uh, it depends on the vision to okay. the renewable energy. There are lots of uh, big energy companies mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, just, it's just the same requirements for me to hire people. Definitely, we okay. we want to see if the company they they has the same vision as us mm -hmm. to the renewable energy. Okay. And uh, the second, I think. Um, why people use and and go so that's a good question so that's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about and I have mentioned mm -hmm. if we have the real value for the the users then they will they are willing to use and go application okay. otherwise yeah they don't care about whether it's blockchain any chain like yes they only care about for I mean for energy scenario sector scenario they only care about whether it's very easy to use and whether it can save your money. They don't care about the technology behind the product. Right. Yes. Uh, then, so right now, if I'm using, suppose I'm using Energo. Yes. Can I save my electricity cost? Mm, right now, from, I think right now you cannot because the cost of the energy storage is a little bit expensive now. Right. So that's, so uh, lots of people, they talk with me for the commercialization. Uh, I have to be very honest for this topic because considering to the cost of the infrastructure and the energy uh, storage, 
is we don't have a benefit, like economic benefits for for the Anigo uh, solution. But uh, according to some data and statistics for the cost of energy storage, we do believe and we do think like within like three years mm -hmm. we can have a really uh, impact and uh, have some really economic benefits for our users. Okay. So. Uh, so let's think about the cost of electricity mm -hmm. um, generated from the fossil fuels yes. and renewable energy source. Mm -hmm. So I think currently, I'm not an expert in this area, but like currently I guess the, uh, the energy from generated from the fossil fuel is much cheaper than the um, yes. solar panel generated mm -hmm. yeah. electricity. Do you expect that to change sometime soon? Because like the price difference actually has a has a huge impact on your mm -hmm. the success of your project. Yes. So, w what is your like uh, mm -hmm. forecast on the? Um, it's just like uh, whether we want to uh, eat the home business from the traditional energy company mm -hmm. or we want to partner with them. I think the 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 answer is we want to partner with them. As I have mentioned, in our solution, people will. Um, consume the locally produced uh, clean energy first, and definitely it's not enough. And uh, when they don't, when they have insufficient clean energy, the switch will goes to the state grid, and they can use the traditional energy as usual. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so I'm here proposing more energy company trying to find us because we don't want to have a conflict with the local, the traditional energy company. We want to help them <coughs> to, to uh, I mean, to reshape the new energy future with them together. Because I don't think uh, from a uh, small clean tech startup, we can change the world. I'm not saying that we are changing the world. Definitely, we need more people to come to our, to be the aligned members, then we can change the world. Yeah. So moving on to the uh, next question, I think we had a lot of questions over this. Uh, it is about the regulations on the uh, uh, local markets and especially over the Chinese market as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, it seems like there will be a lot of regulations over the renewable energies or the electricity as well as the ICOs and the cryptocurrency market as well. Yeah. So you see, we are working so hard for two different, two for two babies and mm -hmm. so many problems for for regulation. Um, first is for renewable energy and the whole energy sector. Um, now the government they have a more and more positive and supportive attitude towards renewable energy. And last year, the Chinese government, the energy department, they released the policy about to encourage more people to have the energy transaction with the nearby users mm -hmm. from the end users uh, and uh, in this policy they uh, raised uh, several points about the pilots and uh, some pilot areas for, for some companies so I think uh, definitely it's a very good signal mm -hmm. and also for the whole energy sector I think it's not only in China. Lots of more and more countries they just stop and they decrease the FIT for the solar energy. Uh, and um, FIT definitely is not a long-term incentive to encourage people to use renewable energy. So only so how we can for these users they can they can use for the renewable energy. We think the best solution is encourage them use the distributed renewable energy with the energy storage. That's the best combination or the combo for, for this sector. And uh, also for the ICO and the cryptocurrency regulation in China. Uh, yeah, last September, the Chinese government, they cut down all the ICO projects and, um, and the exchange. But uh, yes, we can see the experience from Japan, Singapore, <coughs> Um, they have a well-regulated policy for the whole ecosystem, which helps more and more blockchain startups to come to enter their countries. So even right now in China, there's regulation, but in the future, definitely, it's a very healthy regulation. And you think it will change to healthy regulation? Because like recently, uh, we have received the news saying that they have actually banned the OTC yes. as well as their. Uh, I don't know if this is correct or not, but mm -hmm. they're trying to actually limit the supply, uh, electricity supply to the miners as well. Right. Yeah. Mm, yes. So, I th um, 
There's a rumor about banning the mining altogether in yes. China. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, the most efficient way, efficiency way for the regulation is cut down at first, and then figure out what to do, and then have a <laughs> healthy regulation, right? That's the most efficiency, because they cannot, from, I think for all the people, we cannot figure out at the very beginning. Okay. We only do it, and then we can see whether how we can do it. So maybe, yeah, the first time, just stop it, and then we, like, hey, let's have some meeting and see how we can have a more healthy regulation for the for this industry. Um, one of the interesting stuff is that the um, when I'm talking to the miners, like mm -hmm. they are really um, collaborating with some of the energy providers. Mm -hmm. Like, are you yes. in conversation with some of the miners, and how do you kind of like cooperate with the miners? Um, actually, to be honest, I don't think that we can partner with some miner or local energy okay. because they're using the centralized uh, renewable energy, especially for the uh, hydro and. Uh, small renewable energy, the centralized renewable energy station. And um, to be honest, in that, in that in this area, there is no too much users nearby. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so we have to figure out what's the business model with uh, to, use, to use blockchain in this sector. Okay. Oh, moving on to the blockchain, um, so you are a decentralized application built on top of quantum. Yes. Why do you choose quantum and why not Ethereum? Okay. <laughs> um, or EOS. EOS yeah. doesn't just right now <laughs> like. So first, uh, from technological part, and it's because uh, yes, compared to Ethereum, uh, if we, uh, if the users, you our use our application based on quantum. They don't need to pay much uh, gas fee for oh, no. <laughs> the price of Ethereum. It's not 10, 10 RMB or like ten, like one dollar right now. It's like one thousand dollars now. So compared to Ethereum, so at that time we think quantum may be the best to use, and uh, we do think, and also we think um, quantum has a very big potential in the future, and uh, also we. I think it's just like invest people. Uh, we think Quantum is a very good team. And, uh, so that's why at first we don't have so much consideration for the tech, tech part. We just invest the team. Because um, according to what we are doing or what we are partnering with Quantum, you see we do achieve lots of uh, marketing meetups and so many, and even for the tech with Quantum and also yeah, Quantum's office is quite close to our office <laughs> if I have some problems I just go to find Quantum team and say hey let's fix it. fix it if we use Ethereum I don't think we can get such a strong support <laughs> from the foundation that's true, true, true. Yes. so what kind of like support do they give to you mm. first uh, I think is yes, from the tech they have uh, developers to support our development at first. And second, I think uh, from marketing side, they do have lots of media marketing and the PR and the branding in the whole countries. So you see every time they uh, went to Korea, Tokyo, uh, even Taiwan, we just finished the first meetup in Taiwan. And also later they will have some uh, um, two meetups in European Europe and the United States. So from marketing side, they help us a lot. Mm -hmm. And third is, I think, um, is I hang out with content team a lot. <laughs> um, are time, you a close friend with them? Like, yes, I am. <laughs> and uh, also, I think they provide a connection with other content application. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, once we get connected, we can share the resource and figure out what we can help for each other. It's a very good. So we name the group chat called Quantum Partner, Quantum Family. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What about what about Neil? Why why did you not? Like, <laughs> are, are you are you are you a friend of the um some of the members from Neil or? Yeah, I have some friends from Neil. Why not Neil? Mm, <laughs> they don't go out with you, right? <laughs> Neil, maybe yeah, something happens, and I mean. Just because at that time we think quantum has a more big 
uh, a bigger potential in the future. Mm. And uh, and also, I think uh, because for the there are smart contract triggering events with the physical world to the digital world, which we have a smart meter to change to be the source from physical world to the digi digital world. So at first we just think about content. We don't even think about other other projects or other um, blockchain. So yes, there is n there is no specific reason we, we why we don't choose other projects. Um, yeah, but like currently blockchain platform has a lot of issues, particularly regarding scalability and yes. some of the security issues related to smart contract. Mm -hmm. So I mean, one of the sensible thing for a um, decentralized application provider to do is that to have like several blockchain platforms in mind. Mm -hmm. So if something breaks, if, if, if I'm building a product on the Ethereum, mm -hmm. I just want to have an insurance policy if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. If proof of stake Casper doesn't go well, I want to switch to Quantum probably. Mm -hmm. if, if something goes wrong in Quantum, I want to switch to Ethereum mm -hmm. or EOS probably mm -hmm. later. So like, do you have kind of like such insurance policy in mind? Or? Mm -hmm. We do have some concern for the scalability and the privacy and security issue, and we do have s several talks with Quantum team. Mm, even, I mean, even uh, faced with this kind of problem, uh, I think the, the first option and choice for us is we want to partner with Quantum to help uh, to have a deep, deep development for these uh, problems, and also. Uh, yeah, mm, I think they had a very uh, good and great progress for the IoT projects, mm -hmm. like what we're doing. So yeah. Okay. So we got a question from the beer. Mm -hmm. So what would be the main driver for those traditional energy companies to work with Energo? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just like like ten years ago in China, mm -hmm. so we only used the bank to to have the transaction to have the payments mm -hmm. but right now i don't even bring any cash outside mm -hmm. i only use the wechat pay and alipay mm -hmm. so you see and 50 of the bank employee employee they got uh, fired and <laughs> lots of people and uh, lots of uh, people from bank they just switch, they just try to find another job from fintech company okay. so i think that's the trend if you don't choose to do it initially, mm -hmm. you will get change from other competitors. Oh. That's, uh, yes, I think everything is changing. And you have to figure out in the future what's your, what's your value and what's, where is your company in this industry. It's like a disrupt, disrupt or, or get, dis get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get disrupted mentality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and the other question, I think it goes back to microgrid. Mm -hmm. He's saying that I want to know more about microgrid project, especially in Korea. Mm -hmm. Currently, countries such as China, Japan, United States, and some European nations are taking the lead. Mm -hmm. But in Korea, microgrid seems to be too far away from the future. Yes. So microgrid, so yeah, Korea. micro, yeah, microgrid is a baby, and microgrid in Korea is like pregnant lady. <laughs> <laughs> Even the co countries and the companies, they have some idea and thoughts to 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 build or to have something new in microgrid, mm -hmm. but um, I think Korea is a highly, highly, highly regulated and monopoly market. So yeah, we. So that's the partner we are mentioned. Uh, we will, we want to find some partners with Korean companies, mm -hmm. uh, Japanese company, even like uh, Japan or, t or Korea is not the best market, but we can have some partners for overseas projects. Hey, uh, Yohun, didn't you say that there is like a Korean regulation that if you want to sell electricity, you have to get license or something? Yeah, it's like a highly regulated market. Mm -hmm. So you need to get a license to be an um, electricity seller, I think. Supplier? Yeah, so if you want to sell the electricity, you need to get a license. Yes, it's not only the regulation, and also, um, it's even I get the license, I cannot construct the grid to other users, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there are lots of factors we have to think um, to implement it, our solution in different uh, areas. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, I think we're gonna do you have more questions or oh yeah uh, just wanna 
ask you over the uh, what is your uh, goal for 2018? What we can expect from Energo and Energo Labs? Yes. Um, I hope um, the first thing I hope we can get is like uh, we can get more people in our community. The community is not only for the cryptocurrency work. The community in which in which people can really uh, have the free exchange for their excess clean energy. Mm -hmm. So that's my target, like 500 users. That's my target. 500? Yeah, 500. Until 2018, December? Yes. So you guys have 200 right now? Yes. And 2018, December, 500? Yes, 500. Okay. Yeah. 500 real users, real users exchanging energy, electricity using... Consumers and yeah. consumers, 500. Yes. Okay. Uh, and also, um, yes, uh, I do hope that we can source more talents. Mm -hmm. uh, because now we, we, I'm realizing, yeah, I have to do it. But I do hope that I can have more impact for my, for people nearby me, and uh, even they don't know me right now. But from this interview, they can know. Yeah, maybe we can do this. Yeah, that's another target for me in 2018. I hope it's not only myself. I, I'm willing to do this project. Mm -hmm. I hope more and more times who can have the same vision for this topic. It's a very important topic for the renewable energy and the sustainable environment. Then uh, if any companies who's watching this or who has actually got access to watch this wants to actually reach out to you, then how can they reach out to you? Okay, just leave my Kakao talk uh, <laughs> after the interview. Um, but uh, definitely if you need any info, you can just check our website like uh, www anygolabs.com and also you can yeah you can reach out these three handsome guys and uh, they can reach out me you mean the handsome guy right <laughs> yeah sure sure uh, do you have a slack channel as well slack channel so uh we telegram have, we have telegram the twitter facebook and uh, you guys have instagram as well right? yeah and uh, medium you can check out our upgrade all the latest news yeah we'll leave the uh uh, URL to their Instagrams and Facebook. Yeah, Slack channels and everything. Yeah. Okay. okay, sure. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone for watching. So I, this was Kai Kai from Energo. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank Bye. you.